Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 from Monday, February the 21st, 2022. Well, as I'm sure everyone already has now learned, Russia has moved troops and military into the occupied territories, as they call it. And But it is, in fact, what the U.S. is likely going to be describing as the beginning of the invasion by the Russian military into the Ukraine. Now, what that is doing to our markets as we reopen here in Globex, which has now been open for an hour, is they open sharply lower. The uh, S&P was down about 85 to 88 points, now has rallied back up as some of the uh, Asian markets, I believe New Zealand, Australia, begin to open, and then we'll get Hong Kong and Japan, they start to open. And that has brought some buying back in to uh, the market for whatever the reasons are. But if we take a look at where I left off last night, I'm hoping that this gives me an opportunity to not only update this immediate picture, but to put it into context again to that larger picture that we're working on. And that is that larger corrective pattern, which will take quite some time to unfold. So while these moves are big in terms of being you know, up to 100 to 150 points in the S&P, that's a large move for the S&P on a daily basis or even on a very quick hourly basis. Uh, but they're gonna happen now. And part of it is because of the wave pattern that we are in. And so let's get to updating that. Now, to start with our larger picture, here in the S&P, we are dropping and starting from the highest level thus far, an intermediate third wave down. So within that intermediate third wave, there are going to be five waves of minor degree, of which we have minor one and two complete. So we're dropping in a minor third wave. Now within that minor third wave, there will be five waves of minute degree. And we have so far finished waves one and two, minute waves one and two. So here we are in an intermediate third wave, dropping in a minor third wave and dropping within a uh, minute third wave. So it's three of three of three. So there, you're, that's where you're gonna be expecting that larger move, that quicker drop, that force of, of what is behind this, pushing the market lower. So now within this minute third wave, we're going to have five waves of sub minute degree. And therefore we have one, two, three. And then we got the fourth wave in yesterday's Globex session. And that took us up to a high. And then it just reversed and we started to decline fairly heavy. And we finished, oh, all the way down here at a support level. And then the market gapped all the way back down to next support at 4250, 4251. And actually the market did hit 4250 on the nose. So it hit that support level on the nose. Now, what does that Fibonacci support represent? It represents the point where wave minute wave three is equal in length to minute wave one. That's an acceptable level. But again, let's reference Elliot's writings where he talked about a third wave being the longest, most often the longest and the strongest wave within an impulse sequence. So out of waves one, three, and five, it is that third wave which will subdivide several times as it moves its way in the direction of the trend, which right now is down until it completes. Now, therefore, third waves being the most, most often the longest and the strongest, I would suspect that it's going to come in bigger than where minute wave one completed. Thus far, it has not. And again, if we rally over here and put in a, a wave, uh, a minute four, if I have to put the minute three here, that's totally acceptable. It does put a little bit of constraints on that minute fifth wave, because here's the other side of the coin. The third wave doesn't always have to be the longest, although most often it is, it just cannot be the shortest. So here it's equal in length to that wave one. Okay. Like it might be just a tad bigger because it got down to 
42.50 and the actual uh, Fibonacci support was at 42.75. So, if, you know, it could be bigger. Nonetheless, I am going to be looking for additional decline. So the next level that it, I would expect it to drop to in terms of these Fibonacci numbers is there is support at 4218, but that is corresponding to the larger minor, uh, minor third wave. So I would be not really looking for that to put in an anchor for the end point for the minute third wave. But I would be expecting a little bit of a drop below 4,200 or right at that 4,200 level. And that puts us into 1.236. So we have our support at 4,196 to 4,185. And then we have again at 4,162. We get additional overlap down here, but that's where the, this third wave, minute three, would be equal to 1.618 of this minute wave one. That's pretty common, but we'd, we'd be looking for another 170 points from where we're trading right now. Now, that doesn't mean it's gonna happen overnight. That doesn't mean it's gonna happen even tomorrow, but it's out there. So, but as, as a minimum, I'm, I'm thinking that we need to get below 42.50 and, and put in a decent larger wave than this first wave. And then what I would expect, that would complete this minute third, then we get a minute fourth wave, and then we get a minute fifth wave before we would declare the minor third wave complete. And then out of that, once the minor three is complete, and trust me, that is where I'm looking for 39.90 or lower. Then after that, we get a minor fourth wave and a minor fifth wave before the intermediate degree is complete. And that is where I would be looking uh, sincerely all the way down to 3621 for the intermediate degree third wave to complete. So we have still have a lot of downside potential to work through. Immediate would be a drop below 4250, closer to the 4200 level. We have a I would find it likely to be a little bit stronger support at 4196 to 4200. So that's a little bit of a zone. And that would then complete the minute third wave. Then I'm looking for a rally. It should be a decent rally and it should bring us back above 4250. So where, and, and in essence, it can bring us all the way back into the price territory of the previous fourth wave of one lesser degree. And that would be on this sub minute level right here. So we should get a very decent bounce back up. And, but it being that it's a minute for, uh, fourth wave, it cannot break 43.54. So again, we're gonna come back up, but we're not gonna be able to get all that high. So I would be expecting it to really drift closer to the, what would end up being the fourth wave of this wave five. And that might be right where we're trading right now, up to this high, up to about 42.76 on, you know, within this level. So still a lot of activity to come. I'm still looking for lower levels. If we really take a look, and I'm gonna go to, let's see if I can pull up a decent, uh, daily picture here. This is the daily chart. I know there's a lot of Fibonacci in there, but if we take a look, this is the high, 4808. That's the high. This is wave one. This is wave two. We need to break below 42.12.75 in this third wave, and that just takes out the low of wave one, and that is an expectation for a third wave. Okay, so intermediate three should take out this low at 42.12. That's why I am looking for quite a bit lower. But the minor third wave has already taken out the low of minor one, so no problem on that level. But so I'm looking for, again, this is our daily chart. We're now getting everything in alignment pretty much here. But again, 
We're still looking for the daily 20 to break below the daily 200. And we're looking for the daily 50 to get itself down below that daily 200. That hasn't happened yet. So, it, so as this negativity builds and the negative energy in the market continues to push it lower, you can see for the negative picture to really go negative on a daily chart, those moving averages need to get below the 200. Closer is that 20. And you would think an 80 point gap lower would really start to pull it in, and it is. But now we need to continue pressure on the downside. And we are seeing that. So for tomorrow, once we get ourselves open again, we're going to see where we are in terms of we still have the Asian markets taking all this in, and then we have the European markets taking it all back in. So we're going to be trading against what they're doing within their own markets, and then that'll be reflected within our pricing as well. And then we get a, a broader chance for everybody to jump into the party tomorrow morning uh, when we reopen US. So I'm continuing to look for lower levels. Trade smart, folks. The upside can be attend, uh, intense. The volatility is high again, and that's giving us great moves in both directions. Remember the market will ebb and flow even when we're pushing lower on perceived very negative news. So when the turn comes and we get some buyers moving in, it's going to be quick. It's going to really push the market. Don't forget that this opening bar here ended up green, ended up being a bullish bar for the S&P. Now we're following it up with a bearish bar, but we'll see what happens. So this opened and it was quite red, but the way that it ends up closing showed that we had a rally back up. And it was very, it was a nice little rally. It, it moved very quickly up to that high of the session at 42.76.75. So be aware, don't get stuck in a position because it could really ruin your day. That you know, follow the price action, follow the moving averages, and use them again on your near term, your near time frames one minute, two minute, five minute. Those are going to help guide you in and out of trades. This longer terms or this one hour, everything is pointing down here. The one hour chart, there's the 200, the 50, the 20, the eight, and the four. And look at the eight and the four, they're heading straight down. They are so guiding this thing lower. So the first thing for a, a pullback would be, it's got to break above that eight and get the eight to, excuse me, the four and get the four to hook. Then it needs to break the eight and get the eight to hook. It has to hook higher. You want to start to draw in more buyers. So tips all done for right now. Trade smart, trade using the moving averages, using the Elliott wave and using the Fibonacci. The next update will be on Tuesday, the 22nd.